In case my mom's watching, I have to make sure. <laughs> um, even on Father's Day, you still got to say hi, mom, right? Um, so first of all, let me let me address those thoughts real quickly, which is. Um, Pastor Edward is a gift to you guys, um, and I hope you kept the receipt. Um, you know, sometimes you get a gift, right, and you're like, yes, um, I will trade this in for a gift card. Uh, but, but really, he comes shrink-wrapped with an amazing uh, package, and so I say, I, I, I know perfectly well that many people put up with me or my wife, uh, you know, and so I, I know that's uh, probably the case with both of us, so... Um, it is really truly a joy to be here and uh, everything this represents. I'll try to get right into it and uh, just wanted to let you know that we'll be looking at uh, the book of Philippians, not the entire book, but chapter 3 in just a little section. And here's, here's the luxury that I have today. I have this luxury, which is I get to leave, right? Um, <laughs> that's a luxury in life, right? You can come, you can... Tell your best jokes, you can do whatever, and then you leave, and everyone says, oh, what a wonderful person. And it's so often the people who are in your life day to day that you can take for granted, right? Uh, it's very easy to do that. And, and so uh, one of the things I know is that you're well taught, right? Uh, contrary to what uh, Pastor Edward just said, uh, I didn't teach him everything I knew. That took about three minutes phone call. But um, others have poured into his life, and, and, and he's pouring into yours, and you are well taught. You're, he can fix any heresies that I give you today. So I have that luxury of being almost like that um, you know, weird Uncle Scott who just comes and tells you some strange story, and everyone goes like, who was that? And you're like, well, that's, he's, he's part of the family. So... Um, on Father's Day, what better thing to do than, than uh, you know, sub for a brother? So, um, Philippians 3. Let me, let me start uh, with this thought, and then you're going to put it up here on the screen. Um, happy Further's Day. Now, this is not a typo. Uh, it, it's something that I'm hoping will kind of stick in your mind in some way, because my, I'm hoping that this little talk furthers your faith. Okay, whether you're a... Father, mother, brother, sister, or none of the above. You know, you say, we all walk through different things in life, but we all walk through the same things in life, right? We all walk through the same type of things in life. And so I'm hoping this furthers your fellowship. I'm hoping it furthers your faith. I'm hoping it furthers your family. I'm hoping it furthers your friendship. So I, again, titled this Happy Further's Day. And the reason I, I say that is maybe it's memorable, but also I know this is a problematic day for people because... People come to places like this or just walk through and they think, happy, happy Father's Day. How in the world could this be an extra special happy day for me? In fact, it triggers off all kinds of thoughts that I say it's, it's not a happy day for some. But the thing is, if it's a further day, if it's a further day, it can be a happy day, regardless of where you find yourself coming in the door. You can go out differently. And so uh, if you'll bring up Philippians 3, uh, this is what it has to say. Philippians 3, I'm starting in verse 12. And it's just a, a three-verse teaching with a few points that I'm hoping you'll take away with you today. And it's, it says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended. That means to have grabbed a hold of it yet or to have perfected it yet. But he says, one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to those things that are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now again, I could just say to that, amen, I'm done. Um, who could say it better than that? Well, I can't. But I'm hoping that in some ways I can just serve as a kind of a connection, a hook to some of those thoughts that maybe the pictures, maybe the words will bring this to remembrance. And you go, well, I completely forgot what Scott said, but Philippians 3, 12, 13, 14, I know where that is. Okay, so at least have this in your notes. If you're going to take a nap, at least get Philippians 3, 12 through 14 in your notes, and you're like, good, I'm done. Um, but this is one of the, the thoughts that I want to share with you right away today, which is kids go further with a father. Kids go further with a father. Now, I don't know if there's a mom who said that was a bad idea. 
It looks kind of like a bad idea. Most of the bad ideas in our house do originate with me. Um, when people compliment our three kids, and they do, I always say that's the power of recessive <coughs> genes. That is my, win my wife's genes winning out, you know, and getting uh, all the characteristics in the kids that, that you would want. But I do have a certain thing that many dads do, which is an adventurous I, I, I will many times egg my kids on to go further. They're like, I'm, I'm out of you, you, Come on, you can go further. You know, you can do more. Um, and, and it's not to put pressure on them, really, truly. If, if they were to say it, they'd say, Dad, you never pressure us. You actually give us only that encouragement that we could do more than we ever imagined. I, I never thought I could skateboard till Dad said, you can do it. You know, mom was like, I don't know if you should do it. Um, you know, last time dad did it, he fell. And I'm like, yeah, but you'll go further than dad did. You know, you'll do better than dad did. And so I look at that picture, and again, I don't know how many uh, kids that bike was built for, but that dad at least has the helmets on. Um, you know, but, but I think kids go further with a father. And I won't bore you with the statistics that you could look up later, but there is not a social issue of any type that is not highly correlated with either the presence or absence of a father figure in the kid's life. Okay, now, does that mean, oh, if, if I didn't have a great dad situation, there's no hope for me? No, the, we're talking statistics. There's every hope for you because the but God factor of anything, just who cares what the statistics say, but you get what I'm saying, that if you want to look at any problem, Dads aren't the problem by and large. Even, even maybe a bad dad, maybe a sad dad. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect dad. But if you look at people who are either in or out of uh, adult male mentorship, whatever that might be, I've devoted a big part of my life to doing this with different organizations as a pastor. And so when I think about it, again, I know all of the statistics. You can go look them up yourself if you like. But this is the phrase that I hope you'll remember kids go further with the father. So, uh, you know, if you, if you have a homework assignment on any thing, you can basically say, if, if there's any way for you to reconcile with, to thank a person who has either been your physical father or a stepfather or a step into the situation, father figure, hey, those are incredible people to say thank you to. And you say, well, I don't have that person. Well, I, 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 I hate to volunteer you, but I'm going to. Pastor Edwards has been a father, Father Abraham, to many, 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 many people. Why? Because just the other day, I teach K-12 through uh, school as a tent-making job, right? And so I, I mentor kids all the time. And I'm amazed how many kids I come across who will basically say, you've been like a father to me, Scott. And I'm like, well, I'm not paying for your college. Um, but, you know, so don't try that one. But, but listen... It's like, you've been like a father to me, and I, I'm like, I spend a few minutes a day with you. And I'm a second father to you? I'm like, it doesn't have to be, you know, this amazing investment. Sometimes it is just a once-in-a-while phone call. Of, hey, I, I think you can go further, man. I believe in you. I believe in what you're doing. Oh, I don't know if I can do it. Everybody is saying it's, hey, you can do it. You know, one of the things my own dad uh, did so, so often, I'm fortunate he's still alive and maybe even watching this but you know one of the things that he did in my life is he he used to tell me you can drag an anvil that far you know what an anvil is it's the thing the blacksmith uses a big weight and i'd be like i can't do it dad and he's like how much longer is it three weeks man i can't do it and he go you can go further you can drag an anvil that far and you know what's funny i now tell my kids that they're like finals week i can't do it and i'm like you can drag an anvil that far. And I'm like, come on, Dad, where'd you learn that? My dad. My dad. And so when I think about this, this is what Paul was saying. Remember, I bring up that thought from the slide there, not that I've already attained or am already perfected. What does that mean? Well, some sub-thoughts here for you. It's this. No one can be a perfect father, but everyone on earth can have one. All right? If you divide it into male and female in the, in the world, right? I mean, m males have some chance, maybe, of being a father. Many do, okay? And that's a great privilege to get to do that. But again, most, many people aren't going to be a dad. But I can tell you one thing. Most dads are duds. I'm a dad. I'm a dud. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. Um, 
I, you know, I would love to think, you know, three kids on the planet got a perfect dad and it was mine. You know, but those kids didn't. But what I do think about it is even Paul here says, I'm not perfect. He starts off that verse by saying, I'm not perfect. Now, I don't know if you would consider yourself, again, you know, obviously not biblically, but the apostle, anything. I mean, this is the apostle Paul. And he's saying, well, I'm not that, I'm not that great. I'm kind of about that. He says, I, I, I have not perfected. I'm not perfect. But this is what's great. No matter what your situation is, no matter how rough it was, no matter how rough it is, no matter how rough you might look and see it would be, or maybe you got that special struggle that comes with not having a struggle, right? Where everyone says, you had it easy. Does anyone really have it easy? And so when I think about that, you know, no one can be a perfect father, but everyone can have one. I have a perfect father in heaven that I go, you know what? I can always look to him. I can't tell you how many times, I know people say, what would Jesus do? That's a good question. But I sometimes ask, what would Father do? Because, you know, God's in those three persons. And so I think so often I'll look at what Jesus did, but I also think, what did Father God do in those situations? Did he save his son from suffering? No. Did he make life easy for Jesus? No. Did he make life worth it for Jesus? Yes. There were so many times where in his humanity even, Jesus would say, I don't know if I can go any further. And the Father says, you can go further. Um, uh, Garden of Gethsemane, I can't do it. Even my friends are way back there. I'm not close to anybody anymore. And he says, well, the further you get from them, the closer you get to me sometimes. Because people will leave you. The Bible says even my mother and father might forsake me someday. But my father in heaven would never. And so when I think about that, I can't be a perfect father. That takes a lot of load off my life. Oh, man, I can't be a perfect dad. I don't have to be. I don't have the perfect family. It's a good thing I don't because they would have to toss me out. But I think about it again and I say, I can have a perfect father. And my kids can have a father who fills in the gap where their physical father couldn't. And I've seen people who had to close a great gap, but God's that big. I've seen people who say, oh, you know, I had a wonderful father, but he's no longer with me. That's a big gap. You know, sometimes there's sorrow associated with how good things were until they weren't. And so when you think about all those things, I love it. He goes on to say the next thought, but I press on. Isn't this amazing? He says, I, I'm not perfect, but I am pressing on. And I wrote it down this way, picture to remember. If you want to press on, press in. What is that? Fancy words? No, it's just one of those things that, again, my dad did with my life, which is he would try to put it in words so simple that I could remember it. You know, it's like package it up so Scott would be, not be able to say, I don't, I don't remember you saying that, Dad. You know, he, he would do that. And so I do that. But to press in, that's kind of a popular phrase or has been for years, but it means to lean into something. It means actually to get closer to something. It means to pay attention. It means to, you know, rather than like kind of leaning out and not paying attention to what God's doing, it's, it's, it's that. So this is not a message that Paul's giving about gut it out, son. You know, gut it out, daughter. Just, you know, man up and get it done. He's basically saying, mm, Lean on, <laughs> lean in, press in to God. When, when kids go further with a father, it's not that a father's saying, oh, you know, get away from me and get it done. There's so many times I say, get, get over here and we'll, we'll do it together. We'll do it together. I can't tell you how many projects um, my kids have claimed, Dad and I built that. And I'm like, yeah, Dad rebuilt that after we built that, right? You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, that is an interesting uh, Picasso-shaped bookshelf, right? It's kind of like, it's all this way. And, and, and then, you know, you get, you get it back straight, and they're like, we did that. And I think so much of ministry over the years for me has been me saying, look what we did, God. And he's like, yeah, look what we did. Yeah, you came in, you messed up a message, and I somehow translated it in people's ears into something useful, you know? You said something crazy, that sounded basically like that. And, and, and people walked away and said, that was so meaningful. And you're like, wow, God, you did something with that. So if you want to press on in life, you have to press in.
to God because, again, kids go further with a father. And when I have that perfect father in heaven, I can be very imperfect. And he says, yeah, but just press in. See, sometimes we think we need to impress God, right? I don't know if you've ever tried to impress your, your parent, right? Um, sometimes people do that. I've watched sports enough that so often a kid will make a shot and they're looking around the stands for somebody because they're looking for that parental approval, right, to be impressed. But I want to think on something with you just real quickly as an illustration, right? Jesus, you know his baptism. This is one of my favorite scenes in all of the scripture because you see all three persons of the Holy Spirit there at the same spot, you know. And each one doing their role, and it's really cool. But you see Jesus come up out of the water, and it says that a voice, an audible voice from heaven was heard. It doesn't happen very often, even in Jesus' life, right? But this was a breakthrough moment, and he says, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Now, you guys know the Bible pretty well, right? So I'll give you a little quick quiz. How many miracles had Jesus performed at this point? Grand total of zero. Okay, zero. How many messages had Jesus preached at this point? Again, grand total of zero. What super spiritual stuff had he done where he sacrificed his life for the people of the world? Hadn't done it yet. And what did he hear from his father? This is my son. I'm impressed. See, now I think about that. I have actually had the privilege of water baptizing all three of our kids at their time when they came to that decision. And you know what? I shared this story with them in the water, each one of them. And it, it gives me emotion even now thinking about it. I told them, you don't have to do anything to impress me. I'm already impressed. You don't have to be anything for me to love you. I love you because of who you are, not what you do. And I said, Jesus went on to do amazing things, and I believe each three of the three of you will have and do. But just know, before all that, I believe in you. And I believe that you have a great future. When you think about that, if you, if, if you don't know the heart of God that way, that's the heart of God, right? Sometimes I'll have people tell me, oh, I don't believe in God, and I'll ask them, well, what God don't you believe in? And they'll describe him, and I'm like, well, I don't believe in that God either. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If, if, that's, if that's God, I don't believe in that either. I guess I'm an atheist, too, on that definition. But I'm like, I go on to describe the Bible God, and they're like, well, man, if, if that's God, maybe I ought to look into it. Maybe you should. Because, again, so many people have this idea of the God who wants you not to go further. If you go one inch past some little thing, he's there to zap you and, and yell at you and all that. And you, that might be your experience. Or that might be your thought. That's not the God of the Bible. And so when you think about that, if he ever, ever, ever has to correct me, it's because he wants to direct me toward better things. And so when I think about that as a kid, certainly, you know, a dad is not just a yes man. Yes, 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 yes. But I hope you know God wants you to go further. He wants you to go further. If you think of him as the big bad guy in the sky who's trying to ruin your fun, he wants you to go further than that. He wants you to go way further than understanding the father that way. But to understand a father who would look at you and say, my daughter, in you I am well pleased. My son, in you I am well pleased. And I think about this. Paul goes on. You don't think Paul had some regrets? Of course Paul had some regrets. Jesus laid hold of him. Now, Jesus should have laid hold of him and for all the stuff he'd done, right? I mean, but he laid hold of him for good things. Isn't that amazing? He put his hands on him and said, come over here. We're going to go further than you have ever thought possible, Paul. Philippians 3.12. He goes on to say, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. See, I love this little passage because there's two holes on this, right? You get it? He says, I'm going to lay hold of what God laid hold of me for. And I'm hoping you'll notice this. I love when God just speaks through your everyday life. If you listen to your everyday life and, and fold that in with what he's showing you scripturally, you'll be amazed how harmonious those thoughts are. Right outside this place, there's some baskets that I could dunk on. I love it. 
I go out there, these bats are like this high, right? <laughs> you're, you're at like a, a, a school where it's like, yeah, I can dump. It's a triple reverse windmill right there. Let's see. I'd probably still get hurt. But you think about what it is to be laid hold of something so you can lay hold of something. How many times does this come to memory for me with my kids? They love monkey bars growing up. They just love monkey bars. And I can just picture all three of them like, ah, ah, ah. And it's way out of reach. But it's not out of my reach. And so I would lay hold of them so they could lay hold of that. And when you think about what that is, a, a father who lists you in your life to things that you would look at. It's not him saying, I have a bunch of stuff I want you to do. See, that, again, I am a, Jesus said, you being evil as fathers, what's that mean? It puts me in my place. So I realize, hey, I'm not so great as a dad. But he's saying, even you want to do great things for your kids. Even people with terrible flaws still want something good to happen for their kids. And so when I think about that, I lay hold of my kids, not to lay hold of them to something bad, but to lay hold of them to something good. And I never ask my kids, what do I want you to be when you grow up? I ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? And whatever it was they told me, unless it was something really like, I know that's not, that wouldn't work. Even if, it, even if it's like a little bit of a crazy idea, I'm like, I'm on your side with that. I will lay hold of you so you can lay hold of that. If that's what you want, if that's what you want to do, and I look at our kids, our kids, they have gone further than their father. I mean, my dad would say amen to that. I, when I was in high school, it's funny that I'm a high school administrator now, you know, that I, I'm the guy who, when you get put in detention, you have to come talk to me, which is very weird. <laughs> you have no idea how ironic that is. You know, that I sit there and I'm like, it's hard for you to have a, a strong ego when you are kids punishment. We're like, um, not that they have corporal punishment anymore, but it's like, you want the paddle or you want 15 minutes with Mr. C? And you're like, I'll take the paddle. I don't want to talk to that guy. Um, and, and you're like, ah, it's hard to feel good about yourself, right? I mean, dude, give me whatever punishment. You know, release me to the dogs, but do not make me talk to that guy. And, um, but when I think about that, I'm, I'm wanting something for these kids. I, I'm really not there because I'm like, I'll go back to high school and make it as miserable miserable for them as it was for me or something like that. I'm like, you go further. I watch my kids, they have a better job today than I ever had, right? And, and I don't go like, oh. I go, yeah, oh. oh. They're my retirement plan. I'm going to move in with them. Yes, this is my plan. Uh, but anyway, yeah, they're, right now they're, uh, no. Um, but that thought in this picture, I hope it'll stick with you also. God took hold of you so you can take hold of something. Are you dead yet? No. Okay, then you're not a hold of it yet. There's still a blank somewhere in your life. And this is what God is saying is, I, but I don't know if I could ever do that. And he says, you don't think I could ever do that? You don't think I could pick you up and put you in that place? You don't think I could pick you up off the ground and have you do a dump when that thing's even too, too high for you? Because there's some kids who would look at that and go, that's impossibly high. And then there's other people who later look at it and go, <laughs> that's comically low. And I, what I realize is that challenges at each stage of life, we constantly tell first graders, you can go further. Oh, I don't know if I'll ever be good at math. And then later, I, I'm watching these kids like win math awards. And why is it? Because kids go further with a bother. Was it their dad at home doing the... Uh, homework? No, more often than not, it might be the mom, it might be the dad, it might be somebody else, it might be the tutor, but it's somebody who's fulfilling that role of somebody who cares enough to take a hold of somebody and lift them up. And I do have to give that quick shout out. If there are single moms here today, uh, happy Father's Day to you as well, because you're doing uh, a twofer. But when I think about what this is, it's to lay hold of something so that you uh, or God to lay hold of you so you could lay hold of something. And I, you know, just, I hope you'll go home and pause after this and fill in that blank. Just ask God, help me fill in that blank. And it's not what he always dreamed of you doing, right? I, I really, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> after I leave, don't correct me now. Um, but, but uh, you know, never never correct someone in front of people. Not like but, um, but you're a good dad, you know that. So pull me aside if you need to. But, 
again, I think I really believe one of the maturing processes of my life in ministry was realizing that God doesn't have things out there that I hate to do, that He's trying to push me to do. It's I've got things that I would love to do, but it never seemed like I could do it. And it's that person who comes alongside, and you know, one all of our kids have amazing different talents, but one of them is just a tremendous singer. But you know what? I never heard her sing for years. Because she was embarrassed to sing publicly. And I actually came home one day, and I'm like, who is singing in this house? And I was like, what, that's my daughter singing? And it wasn't me going like, I don't ever want to hear that kind of nonsense again. We're going to be a lawyer, not a musician or whatever. I, I went and said, what do you need to get more confident? What, what opportunities would you like? You want, you want to do an open mic? I will drive you. You want to work on songs together? I will help you. Um, you need a, somebody to, to connect with? I, will, I know some people. I, we can figure something out. I didn't ask, what do I want for your life? I asked, what do you want for your life? But I'm edging her further. I'm edging her further toward her dreams. Because when you think about that, God has that too. And then, moving on. Philippians 3.13. He says, I don't count myself to have apprehended. I don't think I'm there yet. I'm not to the finish line as a father. He says, I, you know, a father in the faith, I mean, that's all a pastor really is. It's just somebody with a lot of kids. You know, that's what, you look at these things, you're like, like, I didn't have enough of my own. Now i got to go adopt every kid I see and say, you're, uh, you, you need help? I'll, I'll be like a dad to you. Right? I'll be like a brother. I'll, I'll be whatever. That's, that's really what it is. And Paul was this guy who went all over the world saying, oh, you have a crummy home situation? Well, welcome to the family of God. We're dysfunctional too. You'll fit right in. Um, but, but we have that functional father, that perfect father, who will take care of things. And so he says, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to these things that are ahead. Now, I'm going to stop right there, and I think it's funny. I don't know if you noticed this. But he says, one thing I do, and then he gives you two things. Right? Did you notice that? And he says, now one thing I do, and then put, you know, one A, one B. Because one thing he does is, he says, I forget the things that are behind. Are those good things or bad things? Are you only forgetting the bad things? No. No, he's forgetting even the successes. This guy had tremendous success. So it's those things. Whatever those things are, what's those things? They're things of the past. He says, these are the things. They're behind. Okay, those are in the book. Those are written in ink. I can't do anything about those. I got blank pages ahead. I got behind me, and I got ahead of me. And what he says is, here's what I do. In one combined motion, <laughs> it, because they are a, two halves of the same coin, he says, I let go of stuff so that I can grab hold of things. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And most of us go through our whole life holding on to all kinds of things. And again, when it comes to family, that can be a tricky issue. But guess what? I'm not going to just say, let it go, let it go, you know, singing a little Disney song. <laughs> it, it is, it, it's, it's this idea that I, mean, I, I have to first be willing to let go of something. You know, I could, I could do it right there. I could say, okay, Pastor Edward, I would like you to do, hold on, hold on to that chair if you can, or the table. Just hold, hold on nice and tight. All right, if you could come over here. That'd be amazing. <laughs> and you go, yeah, yeah, well, yeah I, you probably do it. I can see you scooching, you know, and, and bringing the whole group with you. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a dumb illustration, but how dumb would you have to be to think, I can hang on to this and go on to that? You just it, It's obvious in the physical, and yet this is the reality of our spiritual life. So God just says, hey, you got something in the book, good or bad? It's in the book. But he said... Blank pages. You want to go forward to the blank pages? There's stuff ahead. And so to take hold of the future, we must let go of the past. I love to take care uh, hold of the future. I'm always wanting to take hold of the future. Man, something could happen. Something great could happen. Something bad could happen. You're right. <laughs> sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. But I know this. It is the great mystery of going forward with God. And if I go forward with the Father, I'll do it. See, there, there used to be a scary place that we... Uh, rented for a church building and it wasn't scary during the day it was scary during the night I was scared so I would always take the kids with me right <laughs> the, um, so the illustration breaks down a little because God's not scared of the dark but you know what 
My, my own kids would embolden me. I don't know what it was. It was kind of like just that idea of they're like looking at me like, I'm not scared. I'm with my dad. And I'm like, I'm not scared. I'm with my kids. And, and, and it was just doing it together. We would just go right through this dark you know, place with all the overgrown uh, you know, shadows and stuff like that. But it's really, I'll go anywhere with that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I'm tough. No, it's just because you're with me. You're with me. Because I go further with the Father. I'll go through things that I, I've gone through things. You've gone through things that I would never have gone through alone. But I was never alone anyway. So I'll never go through anything alone. And so I think about that. To take hold of the future, we've got to let go of the past. But guess what? Whether we let go of it or not, it can't be changed. And so I think about this. He says, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upper call of God in Christ. That's the 14th verse there. And um, this really brings our time, at least this part of it, to a close. I'm going to let um, Edward close whenever I showed up. But I only have one couple things. <laughs> I have one thing in two parts to tell you, just like I learned from Paul here. So my two-part conclusion is this. Uh, your father, your father, your father has an upward call on your life. He has an upward call. That's what it says. It didn't say that downward you know, trajectory. It says the upward call of Christ. Now, you've got to remember, as all, always, that scriptural balance, the upward call of Jesus took him up a hill to a cross, right? But it took him beyond that cross to a crown. So don't think that the upward call, you know, that I'm giving you that pep talk that it's always going to be, you know, uh, blue skies and, and green lights and, and all that kind of stuff. But this is such a wonderful name for your fellowship, to, you know, upward, because um, I, I believe God's word for you is upward, right? Up, onward and upward. And, and, and just, it's a further call. That, that's a great word, just further. Well, what do you want to do in my life, God? I, I want to take it further. Well, well, where? And it's like, yeah, I'll give you further instructions when you go a little further. Right? I mean, it's, it's that. It's, I, I don't always have to know what my, uh, we're doing. I, we learned this a long time ago with our kids. They are always pressing us for details. And then they're like hung up on them. And we're like, it's going to be a good day. Well, what are we doing? You'll see. Just get in the car. Get in the car. We are having a good time. It's an upward call, I promise you. I'm not taking you, you know, to somewhere bad. I'm taking you somewhere good. And so I love the fact that he says there's a prize, man. There's a prize. Surprise! There's a prize. You know, it's like, what is it? It's good. <laughs> it's good. You'll see when you see. And I've gone on hikes with kids, and I've done all those things that maybe you've done where, where it's like, but where are we going? And I, I couldn't even describe it to you until you see it. And then they have this incredible time, uh, and, and the whole while they were like, more details, but now on the walk back, they're like giving me all the details. So I think about it too, just a simple thought. You want to give God a gift for Father's Day, right? God's given you a gift. He's given you the gift of life. He's given you many gifts. I have no idea all the gifts that are in this room. I've seen some of them in different people serving even, uh, you know, an amazing cafe con leche, thank you. And, uh, you know, just things like that. That's a gift, you know, it's a gift. I can't get that in North Carolina, not like that. <laughs> Why everyone talks so slow up there. That's, that's what talk about. But, but give God a gift. You know, get, give him a gift. What do you get to God who has everything? Go further. Just go further. Go further in your faith. Go further in your faith. You know, if, if I, by God's grace, come this way again, and, man, I hope, I hope you're further in your faith, but I hope I'm further in my faith. That'd be pretty sad if you're like, man, you plateaued a long time ago, Pastor. You peaked, you know, then. Well, that's going to be true physically, but I, I, I hope I can say, and if you see me 10 years from now, I've gone further further than I ever thought possible. But guess what? Maybe, hopefully, some of you, I'm like, how are you so far, much further? When I was 50, I was stupid, and look at you, doing amazing stuff. And that's what I think about with my life. I, I have no desire greater at, than that my kids, biological or spiritual, would go further than their father. And 
don't stop where I did. Get on my shoulders and go over the wall and go nuts on the other side. I mean, just, just you know, maybe, maybe boost your pops over the top if you can. <laughs> you know, but, but you get what I'm saying? It's like that boost, that lift. That's what I want for others. That's what we want for others. And so if you want to give God a gift, just go further. So happy Further's Day. Um, I'm going to let my father, Abraham, <laughs> take it from there. Sure, you didn't go to the table. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, man. Yeah, that's the It's crazy. You can talk to me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you again, Pastor Scott. Um, what a joy to uh, hear a good word. Amen? Amen. That was awesome just sitting there taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time, man. I like it. Anyway, um, I'm tempted to shoot them some things at you guys because as he was talking, I was writing down some stuff. But I'm going to be, are you, those of you that remember, um, Billy Joel had a song, Leave a Tender Moment Alone. Oh, man. <laughs> so in other words, shut up, right? <laughs> let's, just let la, let, let's, let, let's just let that which God shared with us in the spirit just marinate in our hearts. Amen. Amen. But I want to share this with you. But God. The but God principle. I love that. So no matter what's happening, what? But, but God. God. No matter what's transpiring, good and bad, what? But, but God. God. Amen? Amen. Amen.